Hello everybody, it has been a very long time, it feels, since I've uploaded a video. New location, as you know, I've moved out of my family home and I'm now living with Yoan and it's all very exciting. This room is going to be our music room. Um, as of now, it's very, very messy and everything's just in boxes. I think the only thing that's operating in this room is the telly. Yeah, you know, I've got my Switch set up there, so... That's what we've been using the telly for, that she just video games. I'm going to be doing a haul video, but it's not just going to be any haul video. I'm going to be like talking as well throughout. So things that I've done while I've been away from YouTube and etc. Basically, I will start off with the CDs that I've bought this month and then I will talk about the other things that I've been doing. Oh, and vinyl. I got some vinyl as well, because literally every corner you turn here, there's a record store. There are record stores literally five minutes away from whatever location you're in, which is really great, but also very dangerous for my bank account. I've been trying not to go to literally every record store. I had no idea that HMV still operated as a, as a store. I thought it was just an online store until I came to Brighton and realized that there are multiple HMVs around. So I went into one of them. And they had an alarming amount of progressive rock things. They had a bunch of Van de Graaff generator reissues, Gentle Giant reissues. And it was just crazy to see that because every other HMV I've been in have not had material from any of those bands or bands that are lesser known to the general music public, I guess, musical taste of the public. With that in mind, I got this little set here from HMV, this was on sale. This is Budgie, a band that I've not really listened to yet, but because this box set was so cheap, it was under £10, I thought I'd get it just to try out the band. All I know is that they are a three-piece group and they were operating in the 70s. And they are progressive rock, so the chances of me liking them are very high. I've heard a couple of their, their, um, their songs and I've really liked them. So I'll just give this one a go. This is albums from 73 to 75, so there's only three in there. In the comments, if people could tell me which one of these three albums to listen to first, that'd be great. Here are the albums and you can just let me know which one which one you think i would be drawn to first another thing i got from hmv the brand new yes album i have still not listened to it yet but once i have listened to it i am planning to make a video about it just talking about it the reason i have not made that video yet is because i'm going to listen to it and i'm going to listen to it a few times so that i don't have like a one-time listen opinion because sometimes it takes a while for an album to grow on you and I've heard that this album is one of those kind of albums. It takes a while to grow on you, but I have heard some really, really good things about it. But I've also heard some very, very negative things about it. So hopefully it will be enjoyable. The singles that were released prior to the album's release, I didn't really like at first, but they did grow on me quite a lot, especially the Ice Bridge. I really like that track now, even though the beginning still sounds like Touch and Go by Emerson, Lake and Powell. It still throws me off, but it's all right because I do love the track. Anyway, I like the middle part in particular. Last month I talked about the new Iron Maiden record and I got the CD version, the deluxe CD version while I was here in Brighton because I couldn't take the vinyl with me. So I just took, took the album with me. This now almost completes my Iron Maiden CD collection. I've still got to get some of their 2000s stuff. I've got pretty much everything up until Brave New World. I do need to get a new copy of Book of Souls because I have lost my copy. I don't know where it went, but I did lose it at home. I was looking for it for ages when I was packing my CDs, but I couldn't find it. So I'll have to get that one again. But this is a really, really good album. I've been listening to it a lot lately. Uh, and I will talk about that in my listens video for the end of October, but this is a really, really good album. I really, really love it a lot. Okay, I've heard a lot of people didn't really like it that much and thought that it was a bit too long and drawn out, but I really, really love it. I really like the kind of progressive rock aspects of the album. A lot of people criticized me last time I mentioned that on my video talking about the album. It is very prog in the sense that there are just different sections within a song and just the sound of it, you know, just, it sounds very, Jethro Tull orientated at points. It does give a lot of progressive rock vibes from it. Even if it's not a progressive rock record, it does have a lot of progressive rock aspects attached to it. I got these for my dad. Uh, this is a Grateful Dead 1977 
uh, live album, I believe. And also the this Emerson Lake and Palmer broadcast from the 70s. I got this one mainly for myself because it was interesting, but I wanted to get it from my dad to give him something from Brighton. Okay, so this month I have been to a couple of gigs. I am recovering from a gig I went to last night, actually. And I will just explain which one I went to first. So Thursday, which was the 7th of October, me and Jan went to see Steve Hackett's Genesis Revisited tour. He was playing the entire set list from Seconds Out, which is really good because we got like a, a mix of Genesis tracks. I am planning to do a video with Johan about that concert, a separate video, just talking about it and letting you know our personal experiences. So I'm not going to go too much into it today. I will go more into it into another video. I will hopefully get that video filmed next week. I'll come back to next week by the end of this video. I saw Steve Hackett at the Brighton Dome, which was a fantastic venue actually. Because I'm a music student, I now analyze my settings at gigs a bit too thoroughly. Uh, but it was a really great, great night and the entire place was going crazy. And it was a really nice venue because it was rounded. So you could hear everything really well. But I picked up a few things while I was at the gig because every time I go there, I like to pick up at least one thing just so I have a memory. So I picked up a few things because obviously my dad wasn't there. So I decided to get him a little something, which I mentioned in a sec. So the first thing I got is the signed live album. It's, I believe, the Selling England set list. Um, but I'm very excited for this one. I believe it is, but it's, uh, one of the Genesis Revisited tours with an orchestra, which will be very, very interesting. I'm actually quite excited to listen to that. And it's signed as well. So I had to get a signed album while I was there. So I'll stray away from music for like a second because, you know, I just want to mention these. I got some t-shirts as well. I got one for myself and I got one for my dad because obviously he couldn't go. So I got him something. This was the t-shirt that I got. I actually saw someone wearing this at the gig I went to last night, which I'll talk about in a sec. And it's got the tour dates on the back. Very cool, very cool. And I got my dad this one here and the tour dates again on the back. So the other gig I went to, which was last night, was Caravan. And that was very excited, but exciting because I booked the tickets for that on the day of the Steve Hackett concert. So it was exciting because I was like, okay, so I've got like two days until my next concert. This is all, this is all very cool. And they played at this really, really nice intimate venue called the Old Market, which is in Hove, but it's technically Brighton as well. And it was a very, very small venue. It took us a while to actually find the venue because it was very, tucked into one of the roads um we did find it eventually and i picked up a couple of things during the interval because before the concert started i didn't actually find anywhere to buy any sort of merchandise and i thought that was very weird because usually I, at a concert even if they're not selling t-shirts they're selling something whether it be albums or just like little bits of memorabilia but i got two copies of their new album I'll explain why in a sec. So this is just the regular version, still sealed, and this one is a signed copy. I got the signed copy for my dad because I thought I, I told him I'd get him something from that concert as well. And because they had run out of t-shirts, I got myself a nice little caravan badge. So that's gonna go on my jacket. Um, I should actually do a video about my jacket at some point. And I got some vinyl this month as well. So going away from progressive rock a bit, we have Talking Heads Fear of Music. This is on silver vinyl. I'm trying to be very careful. So that's on silver vinyl. I am really getting into like new wave stuff at the moment. So Talking Heads, Police, stuff like that. I'm really into at the moment. Just like the weirdness of Talking Heads actually. Just the, I might do a video about that at some point as well. So I got from that same record store, Future Days by Can, which is on gold vinyl, which is very cool in my opinion. Look at that. It's more like brownie yellow than gold, which I guess that's what gold is really. Then I got these three albums from a record store that was literally a few minutes away from one of my university buildings. So I got self-titled Genesis. I know it's 80s Genesis, but I gave this a listen and I actually really enjoyed it quite a lot. I got Clutching at Straws by Marillion, which is the last album that has fish on it. I have not listened to this one yet, but it was fairly cheap. As you can see, it was 10 pounds. So I thought I'd just pick it up anyway, cause I've been looking for it. And I also got Peter Gabriel Plays Live. This is not the Record Store Day exclusive. This is just 
the standard version, uh, a very old copy at that. Very great set list. I had to get it because the set list. The last piece of music that I have bought this month, I bought this the day I moved in because there is a record store very, very close to where we live as well. I don't know. I now associate this album with moving in. And that is Rainbow on Stage. This is a live album and it's got a great set list. That's why I bought it. It was £12. There were a lot of other things in that store that I really wanted to get, but I was on a budget. Student life. And so I just picked up this one because I was really into Rainbow when I was moving in. And that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'm very sorry for my absence, but these last two weeks have been very, very, very intense because I've started a whole new chapter of my life. I'm at university, I've moved to a new location and it's all very scary and surreal still even to this point. Um, we're two weeks in now. This week though, quick update, by the end of the week I will be at home because I'm gonna be visiting home from Thursday to about Sunday. So there will be a video being uh, filmed at least on that day, uh, on any of those days actually. Hopefully on the Saturday, because that's when we Saturdays with Dad. I have got a Saturdays with Dad that I filmed two weeks ago before I moved here. Uh, so I'm going to try and get that uploaded by this Saturday coming. And that one that I'm going to be filming on that Saturday will be hopefully next week. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to work the YouTube channel. Hopefully I'll be able to upload at least a couple of times a week, if not once. I'm aiming for two videos a week, but one is going to be like the starter because I want to try and get something out weekly just so that you, so I can tell you guys that I'm still alive um, and kicking. So thank you to everyone who is stuck around. I did a quick live stream a couple of days ago and uh, it seems that I was fairly missed and people weren't rushing me to come back, which I really, really, really liked. Thank you for not trying to pull me back to YouTube when I have not been ready to. That's why I'm in such a good mood today because I've not been forced in front of the camera. I'm doing it at my own pace. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully the next video will be Saturdays with Dad. Uh, if not, hey, whatever, it will be a video. See you guys later. Bye-bye.